Hello, and welcome to Cardboard Alchemy's live stream on Fridays, or whenever you're watching this. This is behind the scenes at a board game publisher, and just a chat before the weekend, that's what we do here. And uh, sorry, I'm a little bit late, but hey, uh, it's just more time that you got to have tea or coffee or, or enjoy your um, whatever you're doing right now. I think there's chat going on already. I'm Peter Vaughn from Cardboard Alchemy, and this is what we do every Friday, as mentioned. And I have uh, our team member, Rosie, in the comments, helping me put up the awesome questions that you have. We're going to start with just some announcements and game talk, but then I want to hear what you're playing. And also today, especially, we're going to play a game. That is what I want to do in in the first part of the year. So Happy New Year, by the way. It is 2024, and we, Cardboard Alchemy, are back. We're making games. We're chatting about games. We're having fun, and it is almost the weekend, so I want to play a game. We are going to play Letter Tycoon on this stream every week. Really briefly, we're going to play one hand on the stream and one hand off the stream. And if you play along, either on or off the stream, you can win a copy of the brand new version of Letter Tycoon. This is designed by none other than Carbon Alchemy's co-founder, Brad Brooks. And I was the original publisher, along with Breaking Games. My company published Letter Tycoon. It was Brad's idea. I played it at a game night with Brad. Always look, go looking at game nights for what could be the next hit. Letter Tycoon sparked a lot of um, fun, and we made that game with Breaking Games. It has been around since 2015. It has a brand new box this year, and it's getting back out there. And so what I want to do every week is just play around where, where we can play together. If everyone can play on the same team, sort of. There's going to be two teams. We'll talk about it in a minute. Uh, and you can win. You can win a copy. So uh, I'm going to explain the rules, and it's very easy, and we're just going to have fun. In addition to that, I have announcements about what games we're working on and what we're doing. And then uh, we'll just we'll just go right into questions. Uh, it's not always the same thing every week. Uh, behind the scenes is sort of a loose... Well, we sometimes cover Flamecraft stuff. We might cover Andromeda's Edge. News, because that game's coming out this year. Or Critic Kitchen, because that game's about to launch its late pledge and uh, pledge manager. And then it's going to be coming out this year. Or we might be talking about new games, and that will be a variety of things to come in. So yes, ask a question in the comments, and I will get to it. Or if you're watching this later, ask a question in the comments on YouTube, and we will pop those questions in. We want to chat about all the parts of designing games, You know, if it's from publishing or crowdfunding or designing mechanisms or talking to artists or whatever you want to know. I love talking about games. In fact, I will say, this is one of the things I want to talk about right off the bat, is I played games yesterday. I know it's a shocker. Uh, I don't get to play games a lot because I'm making games. A lot of times there's this, this uh, creating versus uh, consuming, right? And I don't get to consume Baldur's Gate on the PlayStation 5, even though I want to. I don't because I'm so busy making Andromeda's Edge, and it's weighing upon me every day that it's, like, if it's not done... I'm very, I'm very um, caught up in the making of games. And so I don't get to play games always, but I put games on the table. I actually stopped work for a second and put games on the table yesterday. And I want to tell you how much it filled my cup. Like I feel so excited today because I got to see other games on the table, not just the ones we're making. It's refreshing to just play some games. Um, obviously, all of you know that you're here because you play games. But it, it didn't occur to me just how much it, it it the activity of getting together with people and just um, chatting and hanging out and, and playing a game can be so... I, mean, I, I, I do that all the time, but it, it, in 2023, it was a lot of work. It's going to be a lot of work this year, let's be honest. But I want to make sure I get that... Um, that 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 rush as as often as I can get it. I'm actually going to be playing games tomorrow because we I, I actually host a designer meetup in the city. It's called uh, First Play LA, and designers can come and grab a board game slot and show their games. A lot of times I don't even play a game myself at those. I just host it for people. I just want people to play and get their games seen and have a good time, and then I forget. Do you ever have that thing where you host a party and you're hosting a party and you want to make sure everyone else has a good time? And then at the end you go, I hope everyone had a good time. That was exhausting. I don't know if I had a good time. No, you had a good time, but it's a different kind of good time. You know what I mean? Um, anyway, 
So, uh, so what I played last night is I played three games, and I do. I wish I had the pictures. Sorry, I don't have the pictures. But what I played was first we kicked it off with the game of Fiction, which is a game by uh, Peter C. Hayward. You might know that name because he's one of the designers of Critter Kitchen. And I had never played Fiction, and it's like a it's a wordle twist where there are ten rounds, and the team that's trying to guess the word is against the librarian. And in this case, that was Brad. And Brad could tell one lie every time he's... So we would guess a five-letter word. Uh, basically, you pick a, uh, a, a, book of, uh, a book. So, for example, there's all these cards from you know, Pride and Prejudice or, or you know, a Christmas um, Carol, or in this case, it was, um, uh, it was a Sherlock Holmes book. And, and so you pick a five-letter word off of one of the pages of one of the cards. So there's a lot, there's no way you could guess the word because there's enough variety in all the words that you could pick. Pick the, uh, the librarian picks a word and the other people are playing like Wordle and trying to guess the five letter word. And then they're given a, that's in the word, but not in the right spot. That's in the right spot or that's not in the word. And the librarian can lie w once. And so you're trying to piece together all those, where the lies are. And you get three attempts to ask the librarian a fact or fiction about the, one of the letters. It was really fun, and I really enjoyed watching the live. Like this reminds me when I was a kid, I used to play Clue, where my stepfather modified the rules where you could lie once in the game, and that throws it for a loop. You're like, oh my god, was that the lie the the conservatory, or was that the lie about the candle? And you know, so that whole twist of you have information, but it's imperfect information. And we did okay. I was playing with uh, Bernie Lynn, who's actually a publisher of. Um, you know, um, Dead Alive games. They make uh, Omnicon Protocol and they make Lunar Rush. And Bernie, who was in LA and he was playing and Bernie and I were against Brad and we had no chance until Rich Milena showed up. And then Rich, who knows a lot more words than we do, was like, I got this. <laughs> and then we caught Brad in his lies. Um, after that, we played, I'm very excited to say, played Last Light, which is a hot new sci-fi game by uh, Roy Kennedy. And it is touted as a 4X space game in one hour. And even though it didn't, we went a little bit over an hour, I really loved Last Light. I had a blast. And I don't like 4X games, which you're trying to, it's 4X because it's um, exterminate, expand. Uh, <laughs> what are the X's? Everyone, someone in the comment knows. So expand, exterminate, uh, explore and exploit. Is that it? I think got it. Anyway, I don't usually like those. I'm not a super confrontational in the whole, like, let me send my armada, your armada. But Roy has designed a super tight um, Euro. Uh, well, I know he wouldn't call it a Euro, but it's got this thing where you've got six action cards. And like Concordia, you are playing those action cards. And then there is a way to retrieve the cards you've already played. And the retrieval of the cards af after everyone has done that, played um, a certain one of their cards, then the round ends and the world and the universe spins and stuff happens to the board. Super simple to jump in. And I had a blast in that game. And I was losing. I was getting my butt kicked, but I still, it was it was juicy. It was interesting. The, the play was really fun. So played Last Light, Bernie took that one down, and then finally capped it off with a game of Freelancers, which is a game by Plat Hat Games. Um, Freelancers is sort of a story-driven adventure. It's like it's like, like taking an RPG and a board game and mashing it together in a little bit, the experience you get. Um, there, It's a Crossroads game, which is a, a series of theirs, where you get a little bit of, not choose your own adventure, but you, you get some choices in there. Um, and in freelancers, you sort of roll up a pre a pre existing character, but you take one half of a sheet and another half of a sheet. So I was a dwarf dung farmer because you take like a profession and you take uh, a type of character. Uh, the first time I played, I think it was an imp uh, spell sword. Uh, so you, you just you know you you mix up two characters, and on the back there's sort of a Mad Libs uh, adventure uh, like of their. You get a backstory, and then you get exploits that you get to read if you get far enough and it's kind of like a very simple quick 
uh, RPG hit, right? Because you're getting a character, you get to fill in a couple blanks, and then you get the story. And then you go on an adventure with the other characters, and you choose what you want to do and where you want to go, and you draw on a map, and you occasionally get some level ups. And it's, you know, like pen and paper uh, Mad Libs. It, it, it feels really fun. Um, and I will tell you that, so I had played Forgotten Waters, which is another one of their games in the series. And Forgotten Waters is great. This felt like another version of Forgotten Waters where they improved a couple things about it. But also, Freelancers uh, is all, there's an app that you can use as a companion that will read the story to you. Um, and I, I think you have to play with the app. And the story writing was amazing. It was really funny. It was tongue in cheek. It was meta. It was fourth wall breaking. There was a time when um, it was really funny. Uh, we're playing the story and, um, you know, uh, Rich, whose character was a clam digger, clam digger, who, when he read his backstory, the reason why he was a clam digger is because he hates clams. He hates clams so much that he wants to eradicate every clam that exists in the world. That's his backstory. And so we ran into a, another person and she mentions clams and his options were like to stop talking or to kill her on the spot. It, it, it was just like, <laughs> and so he chose to kill her on the spot and he got rewarded. Uh, then he went a little dark. You, you actually can go light or dark or whatever. But um, there was another option that he was presented with and it was wacky and silly. So he chose it. And the, uh, the narrator stopped and said, really, you're going to pick that choice. Like we literally only put that choice because we thought nobody would pick it. Like it stops the game for a second and and just and just said, Why are you picking this? It was wacky and silly, um, and a lot of fun. That all being said, those three games are just three games uh that I happen to play. I have a long list of, of the the shelf of opportunity, as some people might say. Um so I have more on my shelf of opportunity, but I got those those played and I was really excited to do that. And I'd love to hear what you've been playing or what you're going to play this weekend because it's fun to think about all the different games that are out there. There's so many different ones to play. Speaking of which, um, I want to play Letter Tycoon before it gets uh, too far. However, I will say, because I just saw a comment about Wormspan, I have another topic for today, which is I want to talk about Wormspan for a second. Wormspan is the new announcement, the new release uh, hatching uh, from Stonemaier Games. And it was announced yesterday on January 4th. And it's, I believe, coming online on January 31st. And it is a dragon spinoff of Wingspan because it says Wormspan, a Wingspan game. I don't know if you've played Wingspan, but it is a it's an awesome engine builder with birds where you are making uh, rows of these birds that have different um, powers on them. And as you play to a row, you can activate all the powers on that row and you can lay eggs and you can put and birds can, um, you know, predatory birds like owls and falcons can capture other cards underneath and you can score points a myriad of ways. And now they've made a dragon version and done as Stonemeyer says a number of twists to the gameplay. They've put in things like speckled dragon eggs. I mean, come on, dragon eggs are a an awesome idea. But there's so many awesome ideas in there. There's new mechanisms like caves. There's a meeple that can go into the caves and visit the dragons. And of course, we're fans of dragons at this company. I mean, come on. And it is the year of the dragon almost on February 10th. It'll be the year of the dragon. And I think it's perfect timing. I think it's a brilliant move. And I actually, because um, everyone's doing top 10, top fives, I was thinking I'm going to do my top five reasons why Stonemeyer Games is one of the companies I'm inspired by. And into that same slash why I think Wormspan is a fantastic idea. So my top five reasons why I really am inspired by Stonemeyer Games and why I think Wormspan is a fantastic release the first one is going to be diversity and inclusivity um, in general, because uh, Wingspan was designed by Elizabeth Hargrave, and it's fantastic to see women designers get the accolades that Elizabeth's gotten, well-deserved accolades. And in this particular case, Wormspan is designed by another um, designer, Connie, 
uh, Connie Vogelman, who designed Apiary and then developed by Elizabeth Hargrave, and with an artist, Clementine Campardeau, uh, who is also um, a woman, and her BGG uh, page says she's all about inspiring women to achieve success. And I really love to see this happen. I, it's one of the, it's fantastic. I think he's a great champion for um, seeing more change in the hobby and seeing everyone get a chance. And I just, I, I, I'm, I love it. I love seeing that happen. The second reason why I'm excited by Wormspan is that the, I mean, we talked about how it's a dragon game. We're going to get to that. But I love the transparency that their company um, aspires to every time. And Jamie has already released the rule book for the game that's coming uh, so that everybody can just read the rules. If you if you don't think it's necessarily the game for you or you're not sure if it's the game for you, you can go read the rule book. I love that. But also he's transparent about every part of the process, every part of why they came in. He did a stream two days ago where he explained and answered questions just like this. And he said how many copies they're printing. It turns out it's 100,000 copies out of the gate, which is a fantastic number for board games. Yay for board games in 2024 that there's this game that has already that much. Um, you can tell out of the gate it's going to be a smash hit. I love how he is, uh, he's got the date out there. He launched it on a certain date. He knows when the press can review it. He said January 31st is the date that it goes on their website. It's super um, transparent, everything about it. The third reason why I think it is fantastic is that it's community driven. Now there's been a lot of chatter about whether or not it's new enough or different enough, but as a company, our own company facing Flamecraft, another fantastic dragon game if I don't say so myself, um, the community wants a sequel. I mean, the community wants more dragons. Same thing with Dwellings of Eldervale. Uh, there was just you know, Luke makes a great engine builder. Everyone says, can I have another engine builder, please? So I don't, I think it's fantastic that he's listening to what the community wants and says, well, you know, here's a chance to make a more complex twist on Wingspan, right? So it's, I, I think sequels, standalone sequels, spiritual successors are fantastic. Um, if you're paying attention to what the community wants, I think it's a great idea. I yeah I I can't fault that. Obviously, we also want to do what the community wants. We listen and we care, and his company listens and cares, and I think that's fantastic. Um, then I'd say number, the the fourth reason is that it's dragons done right. I mean, I'm not going to say that there's a right way to do dragons. There isn't, but but you know that he's going to pour all this attention into detail. Like there's a book of, they're not facts like they were about birds, but there's a book of um, dragon flavor for every single dragon in the game. The world's been thought out. The concept's been thought out. It's not a, let's just slap dragons on something. It's a, it's a fully thought out, detailed, you know, like I said about the speckled eggs, the components are going to be excellent. You know that. Um, I think that. I think it's just going to be thorough, just like everything their company does is thorough. And I just think that's um, one of the things I look forward to about his games. I, I don't have to question the quality. I don't have to question how thorough it's going to be and how well thought out it's going to be. And I, I think that's great. And to the dragon point, you know, dragons are always burning something down, or usually they are. And here we have another game where the explorer that you're going to the caves is not fighting the dragons. It's just exploring and learning about the dragons and seeing all the different dragons inspired by mythology from all over the world, east and west. I think it's fantastic to get that look into dragons without a we must slay the dragon, which I did, by the way, in the Freelancers game. Of course, it was still fun to go after a dragon that wanted to, to uh, get you. But this is a different take on dragons, and it's going to be a thorough, amazing take on dragons. And of course, we love that being fans of Flamecraft. Um, you know, lastly, I was going to say, uh, I think my last point was going to be that it's extremely well organized and executed. Um, I think that's fantastic. I, you know, it, it's just like with all of their games. I think it goes into um, all my other points too about the trust I have in that company. But because it's so 
you know, coordinated and organized and, you know, and the, they're out there on, they've got a trailer, they've announced a date, they've got the date that reviewers are going to be previewing it, which is the 22nd, the date that it's coming out, uh, the retail release after that, all completely planned. By the time he did this announcement, there was already a box. He's already got everything fleshed out and the whole marketing plan. And you think about how it's really, even though he has a ton of freelancers that work for him, it's really like, a very small team that is making these games. And as a small team ourselves, I'm blown away by what they're able to achieve and how well they're able to do everything over there. So from a company that makes a dragon game to another company that's now making a dragon game, uh, we wish Stonemaier the ultimate success with Wormspan. And I'm definitely getting a copy. Uh, anyway, so... Um, that was those were those two topics, but now let's let's play a game. Let's talk about Letter Tycoon for a second. We're going to be doing Letter Tycoon uh, over January, spilling into February, perhaps March. We're going to play a game. So how does that work? Well, let me talk about Letter Tycoon and how it works. It's a very easy game to to jump into. So let's go. Let's talk about Letter Tycoon. So Letter Tycoon, uh, made by Brad Brooks, is a word game where you are trying to own the alphabet. You are basically trying to build your alphabet empire. You spell a word, and in this case, we're going to do it as a community, so we'll be able to figure out what word we want to play together. We're going to spell a word, and then at the end of, of that word, you earn money and stocks. So you get, like, to get cash, cash money for your word, and then you can buy a letter. So like, for example, if I spell a word like apple and I buy the the A, then in future rounds, when my opponent or opponents spell a word with an A in it, I own that A. I have a patent on that A and I make a dollar every time the A gets used. I can then use those dollars to buy more word, more letters and so on and so forth. And when enough letters of the alphabet have been bought, then a, a winner is determined based on how many patents patent value, money, and stocks that you have. And then the the most, uh, you know, the the um, the winner is the uh, letter tycoon, as it were. So I thought of a way we could play on the stream where there will be an orange team for the online experience, meaning that right now we're going to form a word and we're going to have fun picking our word. And then there'll be a, you know, uh, an away team, uh, the, the green team, um, you know, green team wins? No, uh, we don't know if green team wins, but there'll be a green team. And the green team can be when we're not uh, the, we're not live and you can just work on the word at your own pace and you can comment in the comments about what, what word you want to make. And then at the big top of the next stream, so next week, we will say what the green word is and we'll play another orange word and then we'll throw out another word to the green team. So you can play on either team you want. Like you're, you're not limited. You can play on the orange team and you can play on the green team. and we will pick winners every month to win a copy of uh, Letter Tycoon. So you can win just by playing. You don't have to be the word that's chosen. You can just win by playing along. And what we'll do is we'll just work on the word together. And then Rosie, or someone if Rosie is not here, but in case that Rosie's here, Rosie will pick the word that we're going to make. Um, just choose the one that sounds fun. And then we'll all go about buying a stock and patent but again rosie will be the judge of like which one we're going to do she'll take votes but she's the one deciding and then we'll do that for the other team as well at the top of the hour this is just me trying to have you know this this may be a little bumpy as i try and figure out how to play letter tycoon with a community on a stream but that's what i want to do because it's fun i just want to do something silly and, and i like playing letter tycoon i'm not the best at it that's why i've brought you here you can come up with the great words i'll just see how you do um, all right, so here is how we play Letter Tycoon. So anyone has any immediate questions? Uh, let's. <laughs> Axel says I want to be on Christian's team. Yes, <laughs> Chris straight in our in our uh, chat also works at Carbon Alchemy, plays this game a lot, and and uh, also loves Orange. So uh, you know the Orange team, it might be rooting for for that team, but we'll see what happens. Okay, so we're gonna play Letter Tycoon. In Letter Tycoon, how it works, and also I'm gonna have a little. Um, uh, I'm going to have a little score here that's going to be in the future. There'll actually be a score here because um, 
you know, you'll have to keep track of what patents everybody owns and how many coins everybody has and what powers they have. Because in Letter Tycoon, there's also powers. Sometimes you buy a letter with a power on it and that can help you in future rounds. So to explain how the scoring works, um, let's go over the goal. So when you're playing the game, um, a two-player game is different than a three-player game or four-player game or five-player game. There's a different goal. So in two players, which is what we're going to play, orange and green, the goal is to have $45 in patents. So for example, um, let's see, I'll show a patent card here. Like for example, the Z patent, which does have a power on it, is $2. So if we had that patent and we owned the Z, we would need 43 more points to, to, end the, to trigger the end of the game. But at the end of the game, if we have any money left over or stock left over, those will be added to our points. So if we trigger it at 45, but we have $10 lying around, we actually have a score of 55 for that win. You know, and we'll, so what will happen is orange and green will both be getting points every round. And then I'll keep that score up at the start when, when we're playing again so that we can see when the end is triggered and how each person's doing. And we'll keep track of powers that everybody has and what patents they have. So that if you form a word with, so, with the other team's patent, of course, they're going to make money. So uh, that's how the goal works. Now the scoring, let me show what the scoring card looks like. Um, so. The scoring looks like this. So when you score a word, let's say we were to form the word. Um, now there's no two letter words. Uh, you have to do at least three letters. But let's say we were to make the word pin. Pin is a three letter word. We would earn a dollar for the word. So you can see there money earned. It would be a dollar for three letters, $2, $2 for four letters, $3 for five letters. If we can figure out a six letter word, we make $4 and a stock. The stock is just money in the bank that we can't spend, but is points at the end of the game. And then seven letters is $6 in a stock. And then for every additional letter, if we were able to make an eight letter word or a nine letter word, we would just keep getting more and more stock for every letter over seven. So again, stock is one of the ways we balance out the game where if I'm playing and uh, Rosie's making seven letter words and I'm making five letter words, she is doing better than I am. But what we did to balance out her, her spending money is that she earned stock, which she can't spend to buy letters, but she is earning points. It's just money that she can't uh, use to blow me out of the water. Um, so that's how the scoring works. We'll go over that when we form a word and how much money we're going to make from it. And then lastly, I just want to say that there's a frequency to how many letters are in the deck. We can bring this up at any time if anyone wants a reminder of the frequency, but there's more E's in the deck than anything, and there's only one Z in the deck. So that kind of stuff factors into what letters you want to buy. Um, Rosie can tell me if I've if there's anything really confusing so far, but if not, I'm going to deal out letters. We're going to make a word. We're going to do something. Uh, all right, so... Let me get a word here. So what I'm doing is in Letter Tycoon, you get dealt a hand of seven cards. And then there are three community cards. So for example, our community cards today are the letters P, I, and N. That just happens to be a word as well. Um, but in our hand, we have the letters C, S, O, E, another E, D, Where's that? And then L. This is what we have. So when we are forming a word, we can actually use any of the seven letters in our hand or, um, let me get that one, sorry, Let's figure that one out. Or we can use the community letters. So we are not limited to using just L, S, O, C, E, D, and E. We can also use P, I, and N. And our goal is to form the longest word we can, and then we're going to earn money and stocks for doing so. And then we'll be able to buy a letter if we have enough money, or we can save our money and bank it for the future. So if, if you have a word, go ahead and write it out. Otherwise, I might be starting to write words here. Uh, because I would, if I was, I'd be like, oh, look, we can form, um, you know, Oops, I don't want to, I want to take I don't want to take that word. Let's see. Let me lock the ones for. Oops. So I got extra word letters in here. I'm going to 
block some things so that I can move just the one ones I want. So for example, I might be like, oh look, I can form um I can form scone. Because I could take this at, you know, I could I could uh you know I could do this or something, right? If I had a T, I could do stoned or whatever I want. So in the game, you know, you'd have the community letters in the center and you decide if you want to use them or not. I, I can move things around if people want. Sconed, scooped. We got a word. So Axel's uh, got scooped. Like we we don't have two uh, O's though, do we? We don't have two O's. We can't do scooped. Ooh, closet got suggested. Wait, wait, that's pretty good. Closet. We don't have a T. Wait a minute, we can't make closet. <laughs> we gotta work with what we got. We got we got closed though. Yeah, that's a pretty good word. We got spliced. Spliced. I don't think it's spliced. It's pretty good. We have an eye? Yes, we do. Spliced. Spliced. That's a pretty good word right there. No, we're using we're using our letters I, as Brad says. Uh, use your words. Uh, splice right there is pretty good. Ooh, we got uh, so we got that is a, a one two three four five six seven letter word. Do we have an eight letter word or seven is pretty good? Does now, enclosed when you're... work? Enclosed. Enclosed. Yeah, well, look at that. Uh, yeah. Let's get this in there. It's pretty nice. Damn. Look at that. Look at that. It's pretty good, right? See, this is kind of fun vert way to play Letter Tycoon because when I play, all of a sudden my mind goes blank and I could just think of like four letter words. And with the power of our community going like, wait a minute, I've got one. We can form really long words and have a fun time by awesome letters. And then the uh, the green team, which will be when we're away from the stream, will also have the chance to think about it and make long words. So we'll basically play be playing like su two super uh, uh, players against each other, as opposed to you know what would happen to me. Ooh, we got penciled. Now, so Chris points out that if we had the V power, we could make two words. And so as we run into different powers that come up, I will explain what those powers can do but there's a power on the the b the j the k the q the v the x and the z um so there's powers on the letters that you don't normally want to buy and those kind of give you some ways that you can like um particularly swing into the game with some some power moves here so do we like uh enclosed do we want to keep going rosie it's your um you want to try some other words up here pencil is cool Pencil. Let's just, you know, we can always put enclosed back up there. I just want to just wanna play with what, you know. Sometimes later rounds, what you would do is you would specifically try and spell a word with a couple of considerations. One is you would try not to use letters that your opponent owns, because if you do use the letters that they own, then they will make money. Uh, the other reason why you might want to use a letter that, uh, a certain letter, is that you want to buy it. So if I definitely want to buy the N, I'm trying to make sure my word gets the N in there. Or if I'm, in this case, if I want that P, I would try and make sure I get the P in there. Pencil is a fun word as well, by the way. Someone said Neo Spliced, but I don't know if it's a word that you can, I, I don't know it. <laughs> Neo Spliced. Neo Spliced. <laughs> I know. Now, there's also a fun thing in a lot of taking, like if we spell the word and and you can challenge, by the way, you know, we have challenge rules. You agree on a dictionary before the game. And if like Neo Spliced was put down on the other team challenge, then we would um, we would look it up in the agreed upon dictionary. If it was there then the person who challenged would, you know, um, uh, the uh, money money would be paid from the bank to the person who was challenged. And if the person who formed the word was actually wrong, they would lose their uh, they would lose one letter and lose their turn. So, <laughs> Neo sliced. And you cut Keanu Reeves in half. That's funny. Uh, yes, if you can put your word in a sentence, you have another chance. Neo spliced. Well, it's like 
That's something there. Are we saying that's a word? This is going to be uh, epic, um, you know, opponents. If, if if we're playing in such a way that like 10 letter words can be pulled off, I'm sure that uh, this will be a quick game. Um, There's also silenced. Anyone... Silenced. Silenced is pretty good as well. I like, I like, Excellent. by the way, this art uh, is from uh, Mackenzie Schubert. Uh, I love looking at this art. Each one of the buildings is um, I, on a on a future uh, stream. I can explain where uh, what the type of building is. But like for example, you can see the S is on a silo. Um, it's not always a one to one. Like the N is a newspaper stand. Um, always an office. D is docks. So. Uh, it's not always a one-to-one, -one, but the patents also have um, the patents also have um, like a relation to the the type of thing it is. It's really fun, fun art. Silenced is a um, that's a good word. Eclipsed. Now uh, we got a lot of good choices here. I gotta choose. You gotta choose. Hmm. Silenced, penciled, enclosed. Now, early on, we don't have any money, so it's gonna be very hard to buy anything. Um, for example, if we spell a seven-letter word, we're only gonna get four bucks. So if you if you have four bucks, you're we're not gonna be able to buy the S, which costs six dollars. You can see in the corner of the S, the I costs seven dollars. We would be able to buy something like an L with four bucks, or like we we, can't, we definitely can't get the E; it's ten dollars. Or we can bank our money, so we can take that four dollars and just hold it. So if we make another word, all of a sudden we can start building building up our cash, so we can buy some of these good words. Or we can buy one of the cheap ones, like the C, and hope that our opponent will have to use one of those letters right at you know pretty soon, where you may be making money right away. So you can see the. The P, the C, the D, and the L are the uh, affordable ones that we could like realistically buy this turn, or we could hold our money. Um, so if we do, do want to buy one of these, the we use to be able to buy them. Do we need them in the word we use to be able to buy them? If, if you want to buy them, they've got to be in the word. So if you intended to buy the the P, the L, the C, or the D, we got to get them into that word. Well, I like penciled because it uses all of them. <laughs> and then everyone's got options. <laughs> all right. We got penciled. Thank you for suggesting that word today. Let's see. It's a fun word. So penciled. All right. Now, the letters that were in the community, which is P-I-N, are all in the word. And so this O and the S, those are in our hand. So we still have those. I'll explain how that works in a minute. So we're going to form penciled. And actually, since since I can do it, I will get it like this. And I will then pull up the scoring card again so we can see how this works. So you can see the penciled one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight letters. Ooh, actually, I was, I was a little wrong on the payouts, actually, Rosie. So the payout for seven letters is actually $6.00 and a stock, but because it's eight letters, it's actually gonna be six dollars and two stocks. We're so rich. we're rich. <laughs> so if you then look at what we spelled, okay, so then this is what I do, is I can take the E out of it. We can't afford the E, right? So it's out of the game. Mm -hmm. uh, we def we can't with six dollars afford the I, we can't afford the other E, and we can't afford the N. So even though we did earn six dollars, I was right that these are the only ones we will be able to buy. Or we could save our $6 and uh, hold on for making an epic word next time. And you want to choose a letter that's going to be commonly used, for example, the D, because people add ED on the end of things to extend the word out. You can actually, yeah, it's a little small, so maybe you can't see it. But in the corner, top uh, corner of every card, you can see it's frequency as well. So the P and the C come up two times, and the L and the D come up uh four times. 
So you can, that's card also tells you that the L comes up four times and the uh, D comes up four times. So we could buy one of those for that frequency to come up. And we'd use four of our, of our money and we'd have two left over. Chris wants us to wait to save for vowels. <laughs> <laughs> I now know how you play, Chris. <laughs> You, I did play a game. I was teaching this game at Gen Con and I was playing with someone and we were playing like almost a full game and they bought A, E, I, O, and U. And I was like, I, I'm in trouble because every word I make is going to pay you money. Um, that is, that they, they is got brutal. Me. But yeah, you can, you can buy the vowels. It's a strategy. So we would have to, that would be saving up the cash. Axel wants to get C for cardboard. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> Look at that. I love it. Um, so you, MP says, uh, I thought Peter said, as we have eight letters, we do get two stocks. That is correct. You get, and I'll have this updated on the score for next, next time you are going, we are going to get $6 and two stocks. Now you cannot spend the stocks. They are just points at the end of the game, just to help you in your final score. So that is locked in. Definitely going to get two stocks, but what to do with our money now, every dollar this is kind of an interesting thing about the the game. I'll I'll explain now. None of the none of the cards that we're looking at possibly buying have um, powers on them, so that's not a consideration. But I want to show you something about the patents for a second. I'm going to bring in a patent for let's say the um, let's say the D. One second, I've got the D over here. Let's get. I have to actually bring it in. My apologies. Actually, Rosie, which one are you leaning towards so I know? I I would choose the D. Say? Okay. But Let me just show the D one just for, for an example of one of the things about the money here. So I'll get the D here one second. Um, I'll have the patents all completely ready for next week, but we are still getting this game going. So, so for the D patents, let me bring it in. I will... Import the D, and it is here, right here. Okay, so, so for example, the D patent. You can see how the docs, by the way, Mac put like a little fish hook for the D patent. So if you buy the D, you get this card, and you have it for the rest of the game. And you can see that it's four dollars to buy, but at the end of the game, the four dollars. If you if you saved your cash and you had four bucks in your pocket. Those four bucks are points, but if you buy the patent, those four bucks are points. So there is no like it's always it's usually better to buy because it's the same amount of you still have the same points whether you buy the patent or don't buy the patent. Um, and if you buy, then every D that's used, you'll make money. But the only reason to wait would be, like Chris was suggesting, you can wait for the big ones if you want. So there is your choices right there. Couple of questions. How many letters can we buy per round? Just one. Only one out of the word that you made. Excellent. How many do we draw cards wise each turn? So you're gonna fill back up to seven. And so you are allowed to when we so at the end of this particular round, the P, the C, the L, and the D are all gone. And the community pool will fill again with three for the or for the green player. And our hand, which is currently O and S, we can ditch those before we draw to seven. So we do not have to keep the O and the S. And we get to see the three letters that go into the community before we decide what we're doing with our hand. So there's a lot of flexibility in Letter Tycoon. Like if you get dealt the Q and the Z and you don't want them, you don't have to keep them. That kind of thing. Is everyone happy with buying D? Comment. Otherwise, we'll go with D. <laughs> <laughs> Are you going to choose for the comment other side, other team? Yeah, maybe I'll choose for the other one so that you don't have to <laughs> so really the pressure. It's me and everyone against you and everyone. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm going to lose. <laughs> so this is the so we're playing the online orange team right now, um, and everybody who has suggested a word. We're, we're trying to figure out the exact logistics of how to win, but what we're going to try and do is that everybody who suggests a word in the online play will be uh, considered to win a copy, and everybody who suggests a, a word in the commenting portion 
of the YouTube will be entered to win for the month. But because picking a winner out of the uh, online play is a lot harder, we might say that for the um, to be picked here, you not only have to suggest a word, but you got to be present at the pulling. And we'll we'll work those exact rules out. But there will be two winners every month for a brand new copy of Ladder Tycoon. We'll see if we can get the Brad Brooks to sign it. <laughs> um, it's a it's a really fun fun game. Uh, Matthew is saying, isn't L a better buy? It appears in more words. Now it could be. For the deck of cards, and there's a giant deck of cards here, um, L appears four times and D appears four times. So, um, you know, it My can come theory, up. as um, Impy also says, is you can add D to the end of so many words to lengthen them. So people might yeah. need the money. So that's <clears throat> that's my thoughts. A few yeah. people have said yes. Chris and Michelle are like, wait for the vowel, play the long game. <laughs> But uh, plenty of people are like, indeed, we love the D, which I'm thank you for that one, Esther. Um, so I'm going to uh, the, the, throw the P and the L and the, the P and the C in the trash because what we're really deciding, I think, is whether to buy the D patent. I'll even um, I'll even bring up the L patent in case artwork is going to sway anybody. Let's see what we got for L. <laughs> L. Oh, I know what I know what his inspiration for L was. So let's see. We go with. Uh, let me save a copy of this one. Patent L. Let's bring the let's bring the L up here. It is let's bring an image patent L. And it looks like this. Now uh, L is for the locks. That's what he did. He made L for locks and D for docks. <laughs> So there, there's that's why the patents have those little fun things on them. And what's the hook for? <laughs> if you're fishing at the docks. Oh, right. They can't, it, you know, they were just like, we need a symbol for fun. That's I don't know why my brain was like, I don't understand how it's <laughs> fishing. <laughs> you're I've been fishing at the docks. I'm watching Stardew Valley and I'm like, fish. <laughs> They're asking me, to, well, Stephanie's saying we should trust Chris, but I'm also like, you know, just have fun and do it. <laughs> yeah, there is no wrong answer. There isn't. Um, so, you know what? Go with your gut. I mean, do what you want to do. I mean. Rather, I would answer out. I'm going to go with buying D and beat Chris. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> well, Chris is playing an orange team also. We're all playing an orange team. So orange teams is gonna have to get behind your decision. So you had six dollars and two stocks, and you've just spent four dollars, but you are now the proud owner of all the docks in the world. So you have the D and you have the patent for the D. We all do because <laughs> we're playing the orange team. Chris is moving to Team Green. <laughs> <laughs> um okay so i'm gonna turn off now here's what happens so i'm actually gonna turn off all these different things so later we'll we'll mark up the scores actually i can leave the o and the s because those are in your hand uh but everything else is gone because we got to deal out the new stuff so on future rounds, we'll remind everyone that you have a d patent and then if the uh if the green team now plays a d then the you will make we will the orange team will make a dollar for every D that is made. So the next thing that happens in Letter Tycoon is that you deal out any missing community cards. And in this particular case, the P, the I, and the N all disappeared. So we've got to deal out new community cards. And so the new community cards are G, S, and Z. That is <laughs> that, those are three cards that the green team will have to deal with. That is awful. And then you, as a uh, as, as a player, when we come back next week, the orange player uh, will get to decide. Well, actually, we should decide right now. Do you want to keep the O and the S and draw up five more cards? Or do you want to ditch either the O or the S and draw six or seven new cards? What do you think, everyone? Do you want to keep the O and the S? I mean, the S and the O. I, my personal opinion is 
I don't see. So here's what's interesting. You see now that there's an S in the community letters. So if you if you you know you have an S, if if the green team does not use the S, if they use the S, that S is gone. So you might want to. Oh, well, let's keep the S then. There's a lot of but keeps. If you think, if you think they're going to uh, use it, or if you think they're going to leave it, you could ditch the S, and then uh, you'd get more letters to look at. <laughs> then we're going we're gonna to keep it because uh, they're all saying keep. So Okay, so everyone wants to keep the O and the S, right? Yeah, double S is quite nice. I agree. Show me the pause. <laughs> Chris's tip here is always keep one consonant and one vowel if possible because you can end up with none of one of those. Agreed. So, yeah. Okay, so O and S is being kept and the community board is 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 out there. So what we'll do now is I'm going to put up the letters for the green team. I'm actually going to hide the uh I'm going to hide the O and the S now because that's the orange team's hand and I'm going to put up letters for the green team. And then we're not we're gonna leave this game and we're gonna go to comments and finish out the, the stream. But the green team can then look at the community three and the seven in their hand and make a word and shout it in the comments of the of the YouTube. All right, so let's let's deal out a hand for our our green team. So green is getting H A M. V R. Nope, that's not the right. That's not the right one. <laughs> R. Uh, and then hold on. I had dealt this out ahead of time. So I have their I have their hand here. Uh oh, and there's um we're going to E. So we gotta bring it it's another E that comes in for their hand, and then another E. Enjoy that comment section. <laughs> yeah. Uh, why can I not get these spread out? Hold on. Look at these nice and... The thing wants to pick the the things on top. Okay, here we go. Get this. So you don't need to spell out a word now. If you want to spell a word out, then when the video, when the live is, is done, you can do it in the comments. Correct. Uh, the comments under the video. I'm we going to get these. these and get these moved around so we can see them all. This is what the green team has to work with. And like I said in the beginning, you can play on both teams. Um, so don't feel like if you played a word for orange, you can't play a word for green. We're having fun. We are going to see who wins this imaginary game of ladder tycoon. But you know who wins is that, well, there's hopefully... I think we all win. I think it's a fun game to play, and I'm excited to play it with you all. But also, there will be some winners picked to win a copy signed by Brad, who is quite the letter tycoon, I will say. So this, I will bring this back up at the end, because I can just remind the green team what they've got to work with. And then next week, I'll have the scoring. We'll, we'll pick the green word at the top of the video. We'll deal out a hand for orange, and we'll go. All right. Thanks for... Uh, Thanks for joining, everybody. I thought it would be fun to play a game in 2024 with you. And now um, I'll see if there's any particular questions for Cardboard Alchemy. And we'll call this this stream for the weekend, and we'll all go start playing our games or get our game on. I didn't talk about um, any of our productions in this stream, but I will say that uh, we are cooking hard on, I've said this before, on Andromeda's Edge, so I will I will probably have more Andromeda's Edge updates in the future. We'll also be reading more letters that are coming in to Cardboard Alchemy. Um, we, we have a promotion going on right now to, um, to write a letter to us if you want to get one of the promos. You can also get it in our shop, but if you want to write us a letter, we'll correspond back and send you the promo. Um, I will also, let's see, I want to say, let's, the other news is that uh, Rosie, who is managing our socials and as our community manager, um, communications, and she runs our TikTok, which has reached 7,000 followers, subscribers. That's awesome. We didn't have a TikTok two months ago. I don't know if it's been pretty recent. 
So pretty wild to have a lot of fun going on over there. And she's making a video every Monday on TikTok. So there's a fun new thing about our products on Mondays. This, um, I don't know what this Mondays was. I apologize. But it was, uh, I think it was about letters. Was it about letters? It was, it was about letters. It was yeah. showing off some pictures that Peter took of some of the letters. Um and uh, yeah, just like telling people they can keep doing it and fill up Peter's letterbox with letters. <laughs> so I will say that like, so as a stat on the letters, even though I don't have any read this particular time, um, when I left for Christmas break, I think we were at 200 in the mailbox, like 200 had come in. And I had responded to about 100. So I was behind about 100. Um, then over the break to New Year's, I got... Uh, 160 have gotten a reply and so i was oh we're only about 40 left but then i came back to the mailbox with another about 40 in it so i think we're we're i'll have more counts when we when we do another letter stream but um in any case i'm cooking on the replies and we're honored to have uh we're honored to have this community i want to say that um, not only was i juiced up about playing games yesterday but i was juiced up that we get to make games to share with you uh it's one of the best jobs you could ever have so uh oh someone's asking uh, let's see i sent a letter with cookies and i hope you guys got it i do believe we'll be to we'll bring we're bringing up the cookies in one of our um streams now we were not going to read every letter uh that was sent in every case but uh, certainly, I will tell you right now that that cookie tin was extremely um, wonderful to get, and what a what an amazing package to send. So thank you for doing that. Um, I do have a birthday coming up. In fact, uh, I'll call Rosie out too. We have two birthdays in this stream coming, J Oi. January. <laughs> Oi! <laughs> Oi! I don't age. <laughs> oh oh sorry sorry yes no you're frozen in time um um i you know it's uh it's a it's a good month in my opinion it's yeah, um i'm gonna be 33 nice <laughs> i will not talk about the age um <laughs> I do. I will say that I, I love birthdays, and I have a. I'll just tell a birthday story. My my rule of birthdays is that uh, this started when I was twenty one. Um, I go to a brand new restaurant to me every birthday. I don't know. I've never been there. I've never had the food, so it can go completely wrong, and I could hate it, or it can be the most amazing restaurant I've known. So I want a new discovery on my birthday every time something brand new. So this year I have chosen to go to Vicini, which is actually an Italian restaurant that was just created by an old friend of mine. He's a chef and he's got his own restaurant in LA. And I was like, that is the perfect place to go for my birthday. Cause I haven't been there yet. And that is in about, oof, that's like nine days or so. Anyway. Um, so I'm excited for that one. Um, I have had some real, man, I've had some birthdays that have been because of that rule and I can't taste test. I don't know if it's any good beforehand. <laughs> I've had some that I'm like, I, this is not going to be one of my favorites, but it was an experience. I try to pick really weird restaurants too. Something that's not like a typical place. Um, and I was going to say one more birthday thing is that um, because I like birthdays, I have I I just celebrate them like crazy. Probably this whole month will be just considered a birthday month. In fact, I decided to go to Tantrum Con, which is not when my birthday is, but it's just purely as a well, that's what I'm doing for my celebration. I'm going to Tantrum Con. I'm very excited about that. Axel, if you want to know the date, it's January 14th, the best possible day you can have a birthday. That's what the day is. Um, but I, like I said, I celebrate all month. I, I love birthdays. And so what I was going to say is when I hit the fives, you know, like when you hit like the milestones, man, I go nuts over those things. Um, you only live once. And I also, I used to do this thing that I, I don't do anymore because it's getting harder and harder. But I had this thing when I turned... 27 or 28 where i was going to play the number of games of my age on my birth i was going to try and pull off like oh i'm going to play like 
that many games. And then I extended it to for that weekend so that I could like have more breathing room. And I believe I went on the Dice Tower cruise where my birthday fell on the cruise. And I tried to play the number and realized how I like heavy, meaty games like Dwellings of Eldervale. And it makes it really difficult to hit the number when you want to play um, bigger games. You're just like, ah, oh, this is going to be hard. So um that's a oh, great idea though i'm having a board game party in a pub and nice. if collectively we can play 33 games yeah even if I'm not part I, of them yeah i think that's i think it's a fun way to level up um oh someone says um 55 next birthday congratulations in my head i'm still 26 i mean right it's just an age <laughs> it's uh, just a number but it's a fun number to celebrate sometimes yeah, Chris is pointing out that we played a lot of Detective City of Angels on that trip. The other thing that fights that whole brand new game thing, like trying to get as many games as your age, is that sometimes you're playing a good game and you want to keep playing that game. You know, we it's a it's a tough tough call. I do very bad with the ten by tens because I like to play like a buffet spread of games. I don't tend to like want to um, dig in to something i would be better with a 20 by 5 maybe there was a hundred different games or 100 play. times one <laughs> yeah. yeah there we go let's see if i can play 100 games for the year right um i'm actually 189 new games last year so Ooh, I definitely beat it. nicely yeah. done uh that reminds me i'm going to use bg stats i'm going to quickly go record the games that i just played last night because I didn't record them yet. And I'm going to record on BG Stats. I love that app. I think it's really fun to um, look back and see the number of player count and what days you played and what locations you played and who you played with. It's really fun. It's good, good stats. So we've got more comments. Um, played Kites this week. Our first four games were under two minutes each. You could get a lot of that one. Yeah, there you go. Got to be willing to lose quickly, though. Uh, Matthew suggests playing Love Letter. That's a good one. You can get you could definitely get your age worth of Love Letter games in. You know, I I did another fun one on my. Uh, it was a it was a birthday weekend. I remember because I was playing with Andrew Tulson and we played. Um, what's like Innovations? Have you played Innovations, Rosie? I don't know if you've checked that one out. Um, I don't think so. Not not one of the Innovations. Sadly, Innovations is by Carl Chuddock, and it is a great engine builder of sorts right it's got he's the designer of glory to rome and glory to rome and sort of his style which inspired brad actually in the game rise of tribes is to make powers that are simple but that like have ways of leveling up um so in glory to rome for example you you're moving things in different positions it's multi-use cards and you can build uh buildings that give you powers for future rounds so you can you play your cards a lot of different ways and in innovations you're playing them like technologies and um like the wheel or stone or masonry or whatever you're playing and then each one of those has different ways it can kind of play into a victory type of condition and sometimes one of those cards that when built will be like you win the game if two rounds go by and no one's done anything about it. so like they are some wild funky things and you're playing um there are multiple ways to win innovations and so and multiple expansions so andrew and i set about trying to play innovations where each game we added an expansion in until we were playing with every expansion and we pushed over and over and over innovations i think we hit Easily a 10 by 10 of innovations was hit that day because you could play lots of rounds. <laughs> yeah, Axel's like, um, try to escape the Casimir with the number of damage cubes of your age. That would get harder and harder. Yes, you'd, you'd start to feel, uh, I don't want to feel like it's worse and worse when I get older. That's why playing more games is even better. It's like you get older, you get to play more. That's the that's you just get to do more. Um, but I'm pretty soon as I get up there, I'm gonna need like an entire retreat month <laughs> to to conquer the number. Paul and Sam was looking for some recies of five plus player board games. Five plus. Oh man, I love I love the fact that um five five players is a great number, right? So 
I've long held the belief that two to four is like my, and now I'm saying this and I know that Carbon Alchemy is going to make a two to four player game someday, but I love when it can go to five. So I love the fact, so I'm, I'm attuned to five player games. Of course, it depends on what kind of five player you want. For example, Dwellings of Elder Vale goes to five, but that's a chaotic insanity that I wouldn't recommend on the first play of Dwellings. But if you know Dwellings, oh, such a good, I mean, five players and intense. Um, you know, at Carbon Alchemy so far, all of our games go to five players. So Flamecraft goes five players and Mission Catastrophe does five players just fine. But to think of other games that do five players, you know, uh, Chris is in the chat. So I've got to say that his game, Asking for Troubles, which goes to seven, is fantastic at five players. Um, five player games, which are the chat can help me out. Um, my favorite big group one is Camel Up. Camel Up <laughs> is a great choice for five players. Um, I want to say you want more Vin like six, seven. You know. Uh, if I, you know, five players is I. I'm looking at my collection. Uh, who goes there? Plays five players. Oh, look, we've got some suggestions. So Clover, Cockroach, Poker, Lion, Dice, Dixit, Odyssey, Euphoria. Oh, Euphoria is meant for five players. Speaking of Stonemaier, as I did earlier, Heck, Heck, Mech, Bonanza. Uh, Carcassonne goes to five. I had forgotten that. I thought that was two to four. And as Chris okay. says, uh, Critic Kitchen and Andromeda's Edge, which are two games that are not out yet, but if you happen to like five player, Critter Kitchen goes to seven, and our late pledge will be opening this month. And uh, yes, we will have another five player game on the market. We like our five players. Las Vegas. I didn't realize that went to five. That's a good game. Deep Sea Adventure. Deep Sea Adventure goes to five? That would be a chaotic five. Terraforming Mars. Wait, Axel keeps suggesting ones that I could have sworn were two to four. So I just, if it's five, there you go. Terraforming Mars. Does Wingspan go to five? Wingspan goes to five. We were just talking about Stonemeyer, And again, I believe he always does make sure his games go up to six if possible. So that would include Tapestry, Wingspan, Scythe. I mean, St Stonemaier Games has an amazing a dedication to five player, which I love as well. Um, it bums me out sometimes. The only reason why two to four bums me out is that I look at my shelf sometimes and I go, oh, I can't. Five people come over and I'm like, none of these, none of these will work. So I try to make sure that my shelf has like an area for five and six and seven so I can cover it when we've got a bunch of people. Is that how you organize it? By player count? I do. Well, yeah. in a way, I do this. I do two player or solo only is away. I don't have very many of them. And then I have two to four as a block that I try and keep. And then I go five and six, seven. I mean, it, to me, that helps me with like, oh, a group has come over and I can see where we're at. But I mean, I try lots of different ways. I actually sometimes go by, um, I don't ever do like color, but sometimes I'll do like themes and stuff. You know, hey, it's all the sci-fi or all the horror or something. Um, yeah. All of our DVDs Kingsburg. are in color, and I can't find anything. Doug's put all the DVDs in color. <laughs> oh, yeah. I've seen um, Pat Marino at the op, and his wall is all color. And I'm just, sometimes I'm amazed by that, and I'm kind of like, ooh, that sounds fun. Kingsburg, by the way, haven't played that one in a long time. Used to play Kingsburg a lot. I didn't know it went to five. I forgot. That's good. Cartographers goes to five. That's fun. Brilliant game. Yeah. Yeah, I'm the same. Uh, will it fit? It'll go there. Tetra style. Ram it in. <laughs> <laughs> will it There's fit? no order. <laughs> There's um, not enough space I, for organization. <laughs> I do my... Uh, someday I'll have to take a picture of the shelf and, and show it because uh, we have a work shelf. I have my home shelves. Uh, I tend to do something where I do, it's not an efficient way to store board games. But what I do is, because I love looking at box covers... I do a calyx shelf where every other so checkerboard style, uh, like the the X's and covers to the front, and the other ones is like a, a stack, so that I get to look at um, flats and stacks. And the flats, it's a terrible organization system because 
You don't know what's behind the flat, but I don't care because it looks awesome. It, it looks cool to look at the covers that I like to look at. I do um, it with books behind, so I'll just like, eh, not going to see those in a while. Yeah, <laughs> that's fun. Yeah, it's a good way to get your books stored too, right? Then you can be like, yeah. yeah. Um, but when you do the cover way, like I'm talking about, every once in a while, I'll be like, where is that game? And there's just no <laughs> way to find it. Or you'll pull a cover away and go, oh, look at that. It's a game I haven't played forever and I need it. If they have feelings, they're just like, oh, no, I'm in one of those slots. Oh, no, you don't like me enough to see me. <laughs> Concordia, kind of crowded at five. I can see that, but I love Concordia. It's a good game. Solid game. Have you played that one, Rosie? I haven't. I, I, oh. I honestly, there are so many I haven't played that everyone's talking about. Yeah, that's okay. We've got all year. Um, <laughs> no problem. We'll work on this. Concordia is Expansion fair. behind the covers. Oh, I don't keep expansion boxes. Just got to get rid of them. <laughs> <laughs> I do sometimes. Like, for example, um, I was doing it with a uh, role player. I had monsters and I like I had the boxes and stuff because I found it too hard to get like all the content in the first box. And so I had like a thing going on there. I will say I was really honored when I went to a friend's house and he had like a cardboard alchemy cube. That was pretty cute. I mean, it was actually kind of, um, it was a combination of, because, you know, breaking, I worked at breaking games, so it was, had more of my other stuff as well, but it was neat to see, like, oh, look at that. It's Mission Catastrophe and Flamecraft, and there's room for Critter Kitchen. There's Is not there a little, like, room. sign saying Critter Kitchen and, like, an empty slot? <laughs> <laughs> there's no room, sadly, for Andromeda's Edge right there. Andromeda's Edge is a commitment. You have to go whole cube or go on the top. <laughs> That's what you got to do. I actually um, have a Flamecraft shrine. Do people not have one of those? Like, <laughs> plush and books and... <laughs> yeah. I, well, I don't I don't always film with the Flamecraft wall showing, but we have in the office a Flamecraft wall that has every language edition front out. And then the, the plush uh, are distributed among the things. So that's kind of fun. Uh, we realized that that wall, which is fun to look at, because it's Flamecraft is in 26 languages now. Um, 20 might be 27. We're still waiting to get some um, news, more news. But uh, it, it's cool, but we can't do that. If uh, Andromeda's Edge, I think, is already going to be in nine languages, so we can't do the same wall for everything. We'll have to pick and choose at that point. Um, anyway, uh, Railroad Inc. goes up to six. Well, that, that would be a wild. I've never played Railroad Inc. with more than two. It's kind of funny to think about Railroad Inc. with a lot of players. Technically, any roll and write can go up to like 100. Can go up to, yeah, I've, that's yeah. a good point. I, I've played well, Welcome 2 with like 10 people. So you just Damn. all... you all. I, I would do that. I would uh, like bring a pad of on a rustling leaves or whatever at a convention and be like, go. <laughs> Yeah, you'd have to have like a, a megaphone for reading out what was on it, but <laughs> roll yeah. the dice, nope. everyone. <laughs> that was a lot of fun during the uh, pandemic too. There was like roll and write Zoom things happening where someone would put something up and everyone was playing because it was just a way to go. I've played it live on TikTok and it's great fun, especially because it's so yeah. easy to teach that people can just join in, um, which is yep. great. I don't know if Chris is suggesting more. More five players are just suggesting awesome games. <laughs> Chris's games he likes section. <laughs> I could do, you know, it's funny because I, I started by saying, I mean, one of the things I was talking about in this stream was how much I admire Stonemaier games. I definitely could do a Red Raven, uh, one of those. I love what, I, there's certain companies you just you just really like what they do. Um, I like what Orange and Nebula does, for example. All There's all sorts of great companies out there, indie companies that are doing it with very small teams and uh, I'd love to see when they get a new release out there. I love Ryan Lauka. I'm a huge fan of the sort of yeah. story that runs through and the art style and it's amazing. I mean, the art style is funny. I've met Ryan a couple times at conventions and of course, when he was just kind of getting started, I think it was the beginning of his uh, career, I was trying to corner him to get him to do art on a game. And he's like, I'm just going to do my own stuff, which is fair. Cause it's like, he's a, he's a one man show that does like, I think even for maybe it was even empires of the void that Chris was talking about. He did the modeling, he did the art, the publishing, the design. I mean, just, just 
just a powerhouse of talent. Um, yeah. Just wild. I there's been a couple times when because I'm a huge appreciator of uh, of art. I hope everyone understands that. If you're coming to Carbon Alchemy, that's one of the things we we work on. Um, and so there's been a couple times where I've tried to get an artist and failed. And for example, another one is I love the style of Root. Thank you very much, Hungry Gamer. Um, so Root, oh God, Kyle's art is fantastic. And there was a moment in time before Root, before Vast got as popular and Root became a thing where Kyle was still freelancing for Leader Games and he wasn't signed on permanently. And I was talking to him about being the artist of a game and I was this close. And then he got a call from Leader Games like, do you want to just do this for life? And of course, that was a great call. And I missed getting Kyle's art on the game and I was so bummed. Um, another one that is another miss for me is um, I love the style of Josh Capel. I don't know if you know Josh's work, but Belfort and he does all the games for, cause now he has his own company uh, with Helena and uh, they do kids table board gaming. And they also do grand gamers guild. Uh, they make um, tons of games and Josh does a lot of the graphic design and the art and they're gorgeous, fun looking games. And at one point Josh was for hire and was doing freelance work and that's no longer happening, but kids table board gaming is uh, very lucky to have that dynamic duo at the top there as well. And they make, they make uh, Maple Valley and, um, you know, um, creature all comforts. that credit creature. Yeah. Creature comforts. And that, that stuff's gorgeous. I mean, the art's fantastic. They also alternate between like animals and then food. <laughs> yes, they like do a lot of food games, dice veggies and they hit a wasabi game and they do. Yeah. I love food games and I love cute animals. So it's like pretty much, their lineup is like, yes, I want all the things. Um, Chris is saying that he had them on his show recently. Chris runs the show Full 42. That's cool. That's awesome. We have to go watch that episode. Um, I have a, it's a funny story of when, well, they, it's a small industry. So, you know, they, um, they work together with uh, Luke on a game, Manhattan Project Energy Empire. Uh, Josh was the artist of the um, of Luke's first one. I, I think not the expansion, or maybe it was the expansion. But anyway, they worked together, and so they knew Luke, but they didn't know me. And so we were at a con, and then it was just like, oh, I, I've seen you on on the internet so many times, you know, but I hadn't met them yet. Very wonderful people. So Axel said he had to go and happy new year. Happy new year to you, everyone who's joined in. Thank you very much. I should probably wrap it up because we all got games to play. Right. But thank you for joining. I love these streams and connecting every week and uh, happy to answer any more questions about board games in future streams. We'll have updates on Carter kitchen, which is cooking along and drama's edge, both of which are. What was that, Don? Don's Don's uh, Don. What you just you just got here? We we got You got to watch the show, whole show. Uh, we're we're playing Letter Tycoon in these streams now. So if you missed it, we played a word for the orange team, and uh, we formed a word. We bought a, a stock. Uh, we bought a patent. The the letter D now. We'll make money every time the the D is chosen. But green team's turn is coming up next. If you catch the stream. And it's now on YouTube. Uh, you can enter, you can write uh, what word you want to form for the green team in the comments. And for the, the uh, here's the, uh, here's Letter Tycoon's box. But here's what the green team is working on right now. You have the community letters of Z, S, and G, which you can use. And your hand is H, M, A, V, E, R, E. You can use any of those letters to form uh, a word. And then we will choose that word. And then you can, at the top of next week's episode, we can uh, the we'll we'll buy we'll buy a patent for the green team, and then play another word for the orange team. So that's what we're doing. Playing Letter Tycoon this year in 2024. But of course, after stream, we're playing all sorts of games because I know just like just like me, everyone's got a shelf of opportunity. I wish you all uh, well in uh, in those games. And uh, game on. Cheers. Thank you.